Okay, uh, welcome to section 2.4. We're going to divide this into two videos. What we're going to be talking about here is translating known functions to get new functions. In this first video, we're going to just go over the six basic translations. And then in the second one, we're going to actually combine them and, uh, and uh, look at the graphs of, of functions where there's multiple translations occurring. Anyway, so you should know all these functions, especially the ones in this video. You should know what the graph of x squared looks like. You should know, uh, let's see, what else we got here? Uh, the ones that we're going to use a lot uh, would be um, square root of x. That's, that's going to come up. You should know what the absolute value of x looks like here. 1 over x. You should know all of them, but those are the ones we're going to use especially in this video. Okay, so we're going to talk about vertical shifts first. Suppose you know the graph of f of x. What does this do to the graph? If, if you take the function f of x and you add k to the y-coordinate, that turns out to be a vertical shift up. If you subtract k from the y-coordinate, it's a vertical shift down, k units. Don't get that confused with the horizontal shift, which can be a bit counterintuitive. Uh, if, you, if you replace x with x plus h in your function, that's actually a shift to the left h units. And if you replace x with x minus h, that's a shift to the right h units. Let's look at some examples. So let's see, let's suppose you want to graph y equals the square root of uh, x plus 3. Well, that you're adding 3 to the y coordinate of f of x equals absolute, equals square root of x, so wouldn't it look like this? You're literally adding 3 to each of the y coordinates of the square root function. For example, 0, 0, if you add 3 to the y coordinate, it doesn't become 0, 3. That's what you're doing to each coordinate. All right, don't get that confused with square root of x plus 3. Now you're replacing x with x plus 3, so that's a horizontal shift 3 units to the left. Uh, why is it to the left? Well, think of it like, like this. Um, the value of x that makes y 0 in the original function is 0. What value of x makes this y coordinate 0? Well, what value of x would make y equal 0 here? Wouldn't it be negative 3? So see, 0, 0 got shifted to negative 3, 0. Let's try a couple more. Here we have y plus absolute value of x minus 4. You've, um, you've taken the function absolute value of x and you subtracted 4 from the y coordinates. So that, that shifts it down 4 units. And again, you're literally subtracting 4 from each of the y coordinates. One more here on this page. Let's see. What would the graph of the absolute value of x minus 4 look like? You've, you've taken the absolute value function. You've replaced x with x minus 4. That's a horizontal shift 4 units to the right. Again, the, the way to think of it is the value of x equals 0 makes the original function 0. What value of x makes this function 0? What value of x ma makes, makes y 0? 4, right? So we got shifted 4 to the right. Okay, let's keep on going. So we've, we've done four of the translations. Let's do a few more. There's the, com there's the stretching, the vertical and horizontal stretching and compressions. The vertical stretch uh, is accomplished when you have a function f of x and you multiply the y coordinate by number a. If a is greater than 1, it becomes stretched. If a is between 0 and 1, it becomes uh, compressed. We'll talk about what happens if a is 0 in just a second. This one, um, this is kind of tricky. If you take a function and you replace x with a times x, if a is greater than 1, that actually compresses the graph horizontally. And if a is, and if a is um, if a is between 0 and 1, it actually stretches it horizontally. So for example, if you had f of 4x, that would actually uh, com compress it by a factor of 4. And if you had f of 1 fourth x, that would stretch it horizontally by a factor of 4. Anyway, we'll look at some examples here. Look at this one. Here you've taken the function f of x equals x squared, and you, you're multiplying the y-coordinate by 3. So that, that's going to be a vertical stretch by a factor of 3, right? So it should look kind of like this. You're literally multiplying the y-coordinates by 3. So the y-coordinate on x squared was it was 1, 1. The y-coordinate was 1. This y-coordinate becomes 3. So the point 1, 1 turns into the point 1, 3. Got it? All right, let's do one last one. Here we go. This, this is where you're taking the square root function, and you're going to... Uh, you're going to compress it horizontally because a is greater than 1. So think of it like, like this. The square root function looks like this. The point 1, 1 
If you compress it horizontally by a factor of 4, it becomes the point 1 fourth 1. 1 1 turns into 1 fourth 1. The point 4 2, if you compress this horizontally by a factor of 4, it becomes 1 comma 2. The 4 turns into a 1. So that way the, the graph uh, is compressed horizontally. Now some of you maybe noticed on this particular example, uh, doesn't this also equal y equal 2 times the square root of x? Can't you take the square root of 4 out and think of it as 2 times square root of x? That means you could think of it as a, um, a vertical stretch also. So this, this, is, this is a situation where you could look at a horizontal compression as a vertical stretch. All right, let's do a few more here. Sometimes teachers love to give examples where you don't, you're not given a function. Maybe you're just given a graph. And they want you to apply the uh, translations to a, to a graph. I wonder why they do that. I wonder if it has to do with the fact that you can't use your calculator. Anyway, so, so what would this do? What would this do to the graph if you multiply, uh, if you have 2 times f of x? Remember that you're multiplying the y-coordinate by 2. So you're, you're literally going to take each y-coordinate and multiply by 2. If the y-coordinate is 0, it stays 0. If the y-coordinate is 1, it becomes 2, and so on. So this would be 2 f of x. What would this be? This is, this is the horizontal um, com compression by a factor of 2, isn't it? So, in other words, the x coordinates get, get um, you could say x gets divided by 2 uh, on the original graph when x equals 0, y is 0. But how about this? When x is 1, this is the point 1, 1. It's now going to be the point 1 half 1. See? 1, 1 turns into 1 half 1. 2, 0 turns into 1, 0. Right here. 3, negative 1 turns into 1 and a half, negative 1. It's a horizontal compression. All right, this, there's a... Uh, Two more, uh, two more we're going to look at, and then we'll uh, look at some examples on the next video. The reflections. If you know the graph of f of x, and you, uh, you multiply the y-coordinate by negative 1, that causes a reflection across the x-axis. Notice you have to multiply the entire function by negative 1, okay? Don't get that confused with f of negative x. This is where you replace x with negative x, and that causes a reflection across the y-axis. So let's get a couple examples. Here we have the square root function again. Notice we've replaced x with negative x, so that, that's the one where we have a reflection across the, the uh, y-axis, right? So the graph looks like this. And the last one, what, what about this one? What if you have the graph of uh, negative 1 times the absolute value of x. You're taking the absolute value function and you're multiplying the y-coordinate by negative 1. That's a reflection across the y-axis. There you go. Okay, well, I hope you understand those uh, uh, six basic translations and stretches. We're going to, um, in the next video, we're going to put them all together. Okay, we'll see you then.